Morning, folks. It is Tuesday, May 24th. We just finished a set of these pins, which I thought turned out really nice. That's a one inch 12 thread, and we did that without a tailstock because the Tormach lathe isn't, isn't a tailstock lathe, period. Got a slot down the middle. Um, turned out great. Some folks were asking, so I thought, well, we'll do a video on this uh, here in the next few weeks. We're also literally about to hit cycle start on the ABOM parking attachment. So that's kind of been, I had hoped to get to that last week, but it didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> too funny, I learned this. C Sandvik owns Seco. How funny is that? It's apparently at the sort of parent level. So it's more like a corporate ownership than it is a tooling you know, company ownership at the operating level, but still hilarious to me. Um, we've had some interesting folks sort of comment that at the end of the day, they aren't seeing the value there and that they get by with lower end tooling, you know, Mitsubishi, Tungaloy, or even some of the lower quality stuff. And here's what's interesting is, I don't know whether that's true or not, we're gonna test it, but what I'm also realizing is that there may be the case that Sandvik tools, for example, um, maybe they're better, maybe they're only a little better, but I think the technical support uh, is probably in service is probably stupendous, at least on the technical side. I know it's been a disaster on the customer service accounting uh, ordering side. Um, we bought the iron worker, more to come on that. We did a bunch of testing though, as you can see down here, hi Judd, um, on shearing, just sort of, sort of learn what's gonna work for shearing and where is shearing just not gonna happen. But I'm actually super excited to have that. It actually ties in really well with the lean stuff. I've been listening to two second lean and frankly, a lot of it is, I think, BS, and I don't, I, I think it's fr frustrating, but at the basic core, the essence of it, I do really like it. So more to come on that. Um, really interesting point somebody brought up when we were talking about a new, you know, rock star lathe with live tooling, subspindle, y-axis, and somebody made the point in the comment that they think or they, or, or they believe presently that live tooling lays are sort of going away or, or the thing of the past. And instead, people are looking more to five axis mill turn centers. So like a five axis CNC mill that has a spindle or excuse me, a rotary table, like the five axis nature that can actually rev up to higher RPMs. Because if you think about it, then every single, you know, cat 40 tool is a live tool. And you can hold lathe tools in those cat 40s, which is cool and crazy to me. Um, and so if you think about it, they have bar feeders for mills. I don't know much about them, but they exist, which is also crazy. The only thing I can think of that you couldn't do is um, you couldn't have a subspindle that would hold the part and let you machine the backside. But holy cow, um, I started thinking about that last night going to bed and I was like, God, the possibilities there really are endless. Um, a much more versatile machine, lower you know incremental tooling costs because you're not spending you know two to five thousand dollars for per radial or axial holder for a couple of them, and you've got a five axis mill. Um, I'm just having fun here thinking about this stuff, folks. But would be curious to see um, if anyone has experience with that sort of idea or thesis that maybe live tooling lathes aren't going to be as popular in five or ten years. Uh, I spent almost two and a half hours, I think, on the phone yesterday with three different people from Fusion 360 team. We did these feedback videos for them and we sort of stopped doing them because it seemed like some of the things that we mentioned uh, weren't getting implemented. And so uh, I did another one and sort of mentioned that and they, they were pretty cool. They were like, look, we do appreciate it. Um, the tr honest answer is it's a little bit of a slow moving train. They've got some great things to come. Uh, it's a great team. I think I don't appreciate and there's literally over 400 software engineers and people on the Fusion 360 team spread out across the world. So, um, you know, things don't happen in hours. It happens in weeks and months, and they've got schedules and development rollouts and some really exciting things to come. Um, but, you know, my goal is to try to make sure Fusion remains really good software because we've invested a lot in it. And it's a great thing, I think, for the channel because folks that are, well, you guys know that spiel. It's great software for the price. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Uh, that's it, folks. We'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.